Change your mind doesn't mean there's no consequences for changing your mind. There's always going to be a consequence. Dum ba da ba da da ba da. Are you trying to strike? <laughs> oh, I'm not muted. <laughs> oh, you're right. Well, enjoy the background music and me. Okay, just for the record, I'm always talking to myself.
Hello, Galaxy! I'm Chris Perillo, and I forgot to mute my mic at the uh, beginning of the stream. It's normally something that I do when I'm staging things, it's just that I totally forgot, got thrown off. Oops! The chat was still ad added. It has now been un ad added, or un at un at added. Do you say it twice? Un un ad added? Not quite sure. Uh, so. Got some stuff to show you today before we roll into tonight's advice. Uh, I also need to begin the print. The reason I waited so long to begin the print, usually I have it kind of going, is that it's going to be a pretty short print. In fact, after this very short print, I may be printing another thing. Ooh, wait. Did I print? I did? Didn't I? No, I didn't. This is not... Well, I guess I already have gold kyber crystals. Yeah, this is more of a yellow gold kyber crystal, huh? Okay, so I need to print kyber crystals too. Ah, oh, crap. I drop them everywhere. In case you were wondering, uh, this was printed and built successfully. Uh, I'm very happy with how it's turned out. I've become a Vader figure assembler expert. Mm hmm. Takes practice and filament. Very happy to have this. I have other things as well, including Fix Some Dudes! Imperial Shuttle. doesn't fly out on its own. You, you need to, like, hold it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, did I not press it the right way? Okay, now it's been unadded. Unadded. Un, un, add, add, add. I have an Imperial Shuttle print. This is a Fix'em Dude model. Uh, I had to glue many parts. Hey, you get back there, wing flap. Back, 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 back. There we go. Uh, it, it's, it's a definitely an Imperial shuttle and I need to find a place to hang this because the nice thing that fix em dude did not just send it to me for my birthday, this model that you could print out yourself, but he also effectively in the model built a, a hole so that the, uh, the model can hang from somewhere. So you may need to use glue as well, which I've done for a, a number of my models, so that wasn't, you know, too much uh, of, of a surprise at all. Uh, but I, I glued it together and I'm very happy with this Imperial Shuttle. In fact, I believe it will sit just like that. Just, oh. oh, you gotta be careful because the wings, if you don't, if you don't sit it just right, the wings will like splay out. Let me see if I can get it straight on there. See what I'm saying? Just like that. It's perfect. It's perfect. I could not have expected more or better from a 3D printed model. Probably the best shuttle Tidarium model uh, I've seen out there. Uh, and really appreciate the Fix'em Dude sent me the, uh, the, the, the kit to build. Tonight we're going to be building the TIE Interceptor. I have a TIE Interceptor, uh, but not a 3D printed TIE Interceptor, so... Uh, I will be building that tonight. Let's go ahead and... Oh, it's probing the bed. Probing the bed! Probing the bed! <laughs> probing the bed! Uh, so we're going to be printing or building this tonight. Uh, I still have my uh, bandage. My middle finger seems to get injured more often than the other fingers. Makes you kind of wonder, doesn't it? By the way, I know, or I don't think Deviously Mango is here right now, but a shout out to Deviously Mango. It's his birthday. That's really cool. Hosted him pretty much all day. And my booty was percolating. Percolating? Percolating? Percolating. It's it's a he had a he had a track said percolate that booty or my booty is getting percolated or something something like that. Anyway, happy birthday, DV Slee Mango. When he pops in here to freeze me, inevitably, I'll say that again. Uh, today's the only day he's allowed to freeze me with impunity. Yeah, I'm I'm healing for the most part. Middle finger. I just keep, I, I kept, you know, not slicing it, but kind of just, it was getting irritated, so I had to put a bandage back on. Uh, okay, I've got other stuff. He turned 46. Oh, he's just a youngin'. He is just a youngin'. Oh, he's got some tracks for sure. Oh, Fucho, he does. If you want to hear Fucho's name for real, just go over there, because because he says Fucho's name for real. And by the way, Fucho, uh, now you can do text-to-speech with bits uh, 100 or higher. 
Text-to-speech is turned on with cheers 100 or higher. FYI. Just in case you want to throw me off. And not with a fart. Uh, I've got some stuff! Let's go ahead and begin with a thrift bag. Uh, this is... It's going to be difficult to, to get a screenshot of. But this was something that I was not really expecting to find. But was always hoping to find. Uh, Disney has made these figurines for a number of years. And I, I'm not a, a tremendous fan of them. I mean, I like figures. Uh, but I have picked them up. And the reason why I'm showing this specific... Oh, a freeze? Great. Okay, Pe Pesla is just doing it for the, for, the, for the lulls then, I guess. Okay, so I was holding this up. Paceless cheered X100. Happy birthday, Deviously Mango. Deviously, no, it's actually Devious Lie Mango. Just in case you're Devious Lie Mango. Yeah, you, you, you separated them in a way that they, they weren't meant to be separated. So, where was I? I was in the middle of explaining that the reason I picked up this bag of figurines that I normally would have passed on is because I wanted to get. This particular figure, oh my god. Oh yeah, he's got his tattoo. The the hut tattoo on the side. Um, I wanted to get this Jabba. Only available in a certain set, and I wasn't willing to pay, pay like an arm and a leg. So paying like $3, I think, after a discount uh, to get this Jabba the hut, I'm very happy, very grateful. Gotta clean him up a tiny bit, but he'll go in my Jabba collection, and yes, I have a Jabba collection. Uh, I also got... A uh, different C-3PO, a Bib Fortuna, a very broken, unfortunately, Gamorrean Guard, a, a, a Luke, and a Leia, Slave Leia, uh, or, I'm sorry, Leia the Hut Slayer. Let me go ahead. Ah, trying to hold on. And then, and then an R2-D2 uh, Galactic Heroes, which I, I have so many of. Yeah, I'm kind of sad about the Gamorrean Guard. Um, I still would have picked it up knowing that the Gamorrean Guard was broken, uh, but uh, I, I just wanted the Jabba. Oh, even the Leia, her handle's broken too. Dang it. All right, well, I'm just going to hold up the Bib Fortuna. That was pretty decent. It always makes me sad when I get things that are broken on accident, but the reason, the big reason I got this bag was specifically for the Jabba the Hutt. Uh, the other figurines I'm probably going to turn around and sell, um, so Hollywood N3D hut. just resubscribed for six months. Whoa, Hollywood N3D, thank you so much. Subscribing at tier three. Subscribing for six months in a row, by the way. Uh, uh, Hollywood N3D just uh, tweeted, and he also posted uh, his uh, Vader print, uh, which is very impressive with an atomic red. Like, absolutely fantastic. Uh, so we're going to... Chitown just resubscribed for five months. You pedidals. You can't get rid of me. LOL. I guess not. And by the way, Chai Town Deek, thank you for your support. And Liz, also, thank you for resubscribing. Uh, I caught that during the uh, the, the pre-show thing. What? How the hell do we have a hype train so early? Oh. Hollywood N3D helped. Subscribing at tier three. That's, that's a big tier. So he gets to use the special emotes. I need to make emotes. 
I need to make special emotes. So if Hollywood N3D, here, I'm going to make a new thing. If you're subscribed at tier three, I'm, I'm going to say you can make, I think I've got enough slot. If you want an emote, I can make an emote. So I think Loyal Moses needs an emote. He was the first tier three. Who else is at tier three? Do we have enough emote slots for that? Where at least is, until the slots, you know, kind of fill up, you can you can choose an emote and use an emote. All right, I'm I'm gonna make it a thing. All right, I got I gotta check. I gotta see how many emotes are there. I'm gonna grab Palpatine. So if you don't mind, uh, we'll be back in a bit. In a sec. I mean, I I'm gonna get frozen in the force, the for force freeze before I continue to reveal the things that I got because I got more. Trust me, got a little bit more to show you tonight. Liz, cheering 100 bits. Eclipse Eclipse Empire, tiered tiered X 100. Fucho, fucko, farty, party, hardy, farty, party, go, oad. Eclipse Empire, cheer X 100. Sorry, I was having problems. Oh no. What what just happened? Did you Oh no. <sighs> Liz cheered. That's the problem. I thought I heard something. And then Eclipse Empire coming in with a hundred bits. Farty party. What the hell's a farty party? Is Palpatine vaccinated? No! Why would I be vaccinated? I would much rather the suffer the the problems that the the the, the virus. <coughs> Chris just replaced that monitor. Can you believe it? And now he's going to have to replace another one. So thank you very much for doing that, Eclipse Empire. Unbelievable. <sighs> Demonetized on YouTube? Well, everyone... I wouldn't worry about YouTube. Uh, YouTube's kind of a throwaway at this point. I, I have failed at the YouTube game. We have an Aziz Light. Sith Red. The perfect color red. Chris is vaccinated. He believes in getting vaccinated. He's always been vaccinated. For a variety of viruses. Me, however, no. Chris, yes. Me, no. Just to separate the two. FYI. No problem about accelerating your tweet. I, I, I believe Chris accelerated your tweet from the Star Wars radar account. We are at a level 3 hype train. Which is outstanding. Obviously... I am printing a different Darth Vader tonight. This is an XKCD Darth Vader with a stand, doing it in gold. After this, I'll be printing something that's not a Darth Vader, but it is something that I, I hope to enjoy greatly, immensely. That's right, coronavirus gets a Prilotein vaccination. That's the way it should be. The virus should be very frightened. My midi chlorian count? That keeps me safe from everything. Except my granddaughter. My granddaughter, uh, she's, uh, she's an evil one. That Ray. She, she, uh, she's gunning for me. And I'm doing my best to avoid her. I don't want to enable her in any way. And I may have no choice. But it is what it is. So it seems we have stalled out at level 3. It may be too early in the evening to have begun this hype train. Or, as my old friend Yoda said, begun the hype train has. <coughs> he said, well, okay, he didn't really... I'm... I'm kind of, uh, yeah. I'm messing a bit with what he actually said, but that was the gist of it. That's, that's kind of what he said for the most. By the way, 
before I forget, Chris ended up watching 2001 last night, the old movie. He was so bored. Flacco the Clown gifted Who Caress Chris a subscription. Flacco the Clown gifted a tier 1 sub to Who Caress Chris. They have given 28 gift subs in the channel. Well, good going future. That's outstanding. Sorry, you, you only get me saying your real name the proper way if we get through a level 5. I promise you. Everyone get points, blah, 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 popcorn, blah, 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 blah. And then I say Future's name for real. We're going to set goals together. So for now, it's Future. But if we get through a level 5, I will say his name. I don't know if that's going to happen tonight. For tonight is not special. It's not Chris's special day, which he enjoyed immensely, immediately. You know, when he, when he went through the whole video day with y'all the other day on the not birthday of Devious Lime Mango. Thank you, by the way, for cheering the random bits, Liz and Fixum Dude. Very appreciated. But at 30 seconds left, with 27% into this hype train, we may well have run our course. And if that is the case, I will go back to where I was, ignoring everybody, and standing in the corner, which I enjoy, because it makes me sad, and, and I enjoy things that make me sad, which is really weird, because am I sad, or do I enjoy it, or do I enjoy being sad, and if I can enjoy something that makes me sad, I mean, how does that work? I don't know. But the hype train is over! Well, that was fun. We got through uh, a couple of stages in the hype train. Let's go ahead. Since we got through level through level two, let's go ahead and add some points to all. Let's give everybody some points. There you go. Don't say I didn't give you anything. I did. Apart from the clap, I just gave you the, the clap. Oh, God. Yeah, the guy can be crotchety sometimes. Uh, I've got other things to show you tonight. I ended up getting this for five bucks. Uh, this is a, just a, a cute little bear. In the band. Uh-oh, what happened? Oh, did I miss something? Fair enough. Um, <laughs> did I miss something? What happened? Uh, anyway, grabbed this. Got this. Five bucks. Down from ten. That was a pretty good deal. Not necessarily a set that I would chase down. Uh, it seems to be a part of a series with the sheep and the lucky cat. Which would have been a fun set to build. But a bear with a bee and a heart and honey and flowers. I uh, thought it was kind of cool. Um, you like how the TTS says, who cares, Chris? That's, that's how it goes. Uh, I also found this in a bag thrifting with a whole bunch of other like random batman crap that i turned around and sold um this i believe was a part of the figure series that someone had donated the other day that i missed someone else like a reseller ended up grabbing that bag guaranteed and uh i found this one uh so i, I grabbed it i'm like okay uh, it may not have the snow trooper helmet but it's still a star wars figure and you know i figured it's, it's not a bad deal especially after i save a ton of money so I am good with this. Good with just this Star Wars figure. I'm sad about the, the other Star Wars figures, but eh, it is what it is. I'll turn around and sell these other ones because they're broken. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold on to them, unfortunately. Uh, give me a second. Uh, now I've got some reaction stuff. This is where I should have tagged Yoko. You can be. Okay, so I bought these. Yoko or Super Seven did not send them. 
This is a Super 7 Transformers Bumblebee, Bumblebee exclusive gold Bumblebee. Originally, I passed on it. The card is a little warped, but I got it for like six bucks. So at a pretty good discount. I also see there's like this dang sticker on the back that I want to remove. Uh, I really want to remove it, but I can't because uh, otherwise it, the residue will come off. Uh, anyway, I got a gold Bumblebee. I also got a, uh, a Pizzazz Gem Super 7 figure. Uh, not on sale, regular price, but I'm like, I didn't have to pay shipping and handling, so I'm like, okay, that's cool. Uh, the card has got this nice little effect as you, like, move it back and forth like that. Pretty fun. Then I got a Gem figure. Gem is truly outrageous. But her card is like really beat up. Like really, really, really beat up. So I'm considering for her... Because I'm not sure I want to open the gem figures. Um, but I wanted to collect them. I was waiting for the right price. And it was, it was okay. It's unpunched. But the card is really warped. So I'm probably going to contact them and say, Hey, could, could I possibly get a replacement and send this one back? Because I don't know. I don't know about that. I'd also, for a while, been looking at getting the Teen Wolf, this specific Teen Wolf figure. Uh, it was at a pretty good price, so I grabbed it and didn't have to pay shipping and handling. I enjoyed the movie as a kid, and uh, so I grabbed the Teen Wolf figure. There are very few movie figures that I've grabbed, but you know when they, they're like this, I'm like, I, I kind of, I feel like I have no choice. The original Gem Dolls shoes fit Ken Dolls? Really? I had no idea. Uh, the next thing I got, after watching the Master of the Universe series on uh, Netflix, which I loved, ages 14 plus. Well, I'm over 14 for sure, Mark. Uh, this is an Orko. Uh, the only two that I, I don't think I got were the Battle Armor Skeletor and Battle Armor He-Man. Uh, but the reason I got this Orko, even though I already had one, was so that I could do this. I'm now, I'm not going to become an Orco collector, but that said, probably going to start collecting a few random Orco things, because why not? I needed a 5 POA 3.75 inch scale Orco figure. I needed. So I got my Orco. Ah, kind of fun. This, this is the one. Never, to my knowledge, had the Orco figure uh, as a, a, a vintage Orco figure. I don't know if I, I don't know if I do. I probably could chase one down at some point, but uh, eh, what are you gonna do? So there's Orco, and now the moment you've all been waiting for, or not, I got my Entertainment Earth package. You were never a fan of Jim? I enjoyed Jim. I liked it. I watched it. So, of course, I had to grab the figures. I, I'd imagine they're going to release the whole band, or maybe not, depending on how popular these two are. It may be a very limited release. I could probably just cut into it at this point. There we go. These are all, everything you're going to see here, available from Entertainment Earth. If you use the coupon code CRISP, you can save money. Ooh, look at that. I can save $15 on my next order of $99 or more. Wow. Nice. Okay, cool. I didn't know that, so I got, I got my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that coupon. So, what did I get? I got a new bobblehead tin bank. What? Oh. Okay. Thank you. You're gonna, Liz is going to answer the door. I may need help with screenshots. Or I'll just wait until Liz is back. I guess I can prepare this stuff. So. Did I? This is your ASMR for the night. Did this come in? Okay. 
Because I, I, I'm not even sure if I know what the hell happened to my tin Vader bank. I thought I had it somewhere. And I'm not sure where it moved to. Or maybe I got rid of it because it got dented. Although I didn't think I did. I had to have moved it. Oh, this is going to need some help with tape. I hate taking stickers off of products. It's such a pain in the neck. But at least this is like metal, so the sticker should come off better or more easily. Uh, I'm gonna take this off too, because I don't need this part. Throw the garbage on the floor. I'll pick it up soon. You're back? Okay, cool. All right, Liz, uh, what I got is a Darth Vader bobble bank. So they only had a couple more of them in stock, uh, but I'm grateful I've got one of these now because if I can find the duplicate, great. But uh, unfortunately, I somehow dented the other one I got and figured I'd never be able to replace it. I don't know if I got rid of it. I cannot remember. I cannot find it. Uh, either way, I have a brand new one, not dented. The best kind of bank to have. I got a an indoor lounge fly, uh, like a purse of sorts. Ten dollars. So uh, a handbag, used for a variety of purposes. Very happy to have this. Not bad. Usually you can find them between seven and ten, maybe a little more than that. The indoor bag. I got a what is this? An a, a boiled egg shaper. So I know it's, 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 that sounds really weird, but like it's Kotobukuya. It is a, here, I'll hold it up like this. A Darth Vader boiled egg shaper. Even though I don't eat eggs anymore, certainly not boiled eggs. It's a Darth Vader collectible, so I had to have it. Needed it. I do have some of the, the, uh, the vegan eggs. I just have not. I hadn't made them. I was going to make them today, but I ended up eating something else. Maybe I'll make the, the rest tomorrow. My vegan eggs. Then I got two new card decks. Actually, got two of the two new card decks. One to keep uh, in the package and the other to open and play with. We have the Clone Wars playing cards as well as concept art playing cards. Now available. Got them on Entertainment Earth. I'm so glad Cardamundi lost the license because they were just stagnating. Uh, these are awesome. Very happy to have them. Uh, I'm not quite sure how long the uh, th this particular company is going to have the, uh, what is it, uh, Aquarius, right? I'm not sure how long Aquarius is going to have the license. But while they do, I will enjoy immensely the cards. Uh, I got uh, a, uh, a notebook uh, a, 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 a from, it's made by Pyramid America. This is a spiral notebook uh, with uh, the Mandalorian characters on the front. Not something you can necessarily find in the average store, unfortunately. And then this one, I thought this was, I thought this one was fun. It is a premium A5 notebook. It is a fuzzy notebook. Like it's actually furry. A Chewbacca notebook. Kind of fun. This, this is pretty awesome. Yeah, you got to be careful, though. You don't want to get it sticky. You, you don't want to have to wash your notebook. You don't want to have to bathe your notebook. You don't want to have to shower your notebook. Uh, you may have to, though. Uh, I, I plan on keeping the, the wrapping on it. Let's put that there. Then, I got some Star Wars... Sorry, I dropped... Oh, the sticker fell off. Okay. Star Wars jewelry. It is a uh, it's a ray. It's a ray uh, pendant. No, I, here, let's see if I can. There we go. It's a ray pendant. Like a cameo. Yeah, is that the right word for uh, this particular type of jewelry? Got that specifically for Jedi. Hate how this is hanging down. Uh, specifically for Jedi. It's upside. It's upside down. Oh, sorry. Let's do it this way then. Thank you, Liz. Good eye. Let's 
Star Wars jewelry. Ray cameo. You've heard of guest stars having a cameo. Let's see if I can rotate it. There we go. Uh, well, now Ray has a cameo. So I thought this would be kind of fun to give Jedi. I thought she'd enjoy it. Ray, a Ray necklace, as she might be uh, calling it. Some Star Wars jewelry. Put in there. Star Wars jewelry. What? Then, last but certainly not least, a padlocked tin that's embossed of the its boss of uh, Han Solo and Carbonite, a Han Solo and Carbonite tin with a lock and a key. It's kind of neat, a very unique tin, one that I had not yet seen, uh, and, and uh, Entertainment Earth had it. So when they gave me an opportunity to uh, to get a few things, I had to. The tin is awesome. I agree. I am completely with you, Fujo. Let me see. Can I... Uh, I can't easily unlock it without removing the keys from it. Um, I almost got two of them. One to use and one to keep like this. But I'm like, all right, I'm just going to keep it like this. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to... Just in case. You never know. Can't have too many Star Wars tins. Especially when it comes to back to school. Your dad collects tins? Well, that's a unique one. That's that's a very unique tin. I've got some other tins coming up too. Uh, not today. That was that was pretty much it as far as what I had to showcase. Now that the floor is a mess and I have to like find thing find places for everything that I caught. Like, oh yeah, I got this. Oh I need to I need to put it somewhere. Uh you'd rate that a tin? Oh, ten out of ten? Even better. That's the that's the perfect number. We've got eleven minutes left to go on this particular print. So what we're gonna do is something. Okay, that was done. Okay, uh, we're gonna build. We're gonna try the model here, and then we'll roll into the advice that I wanted to give tonight. How does that sound? Sounds great. Great. Glad you could agree with me. Okay, here we go with the tie interceptor. Let us do this. You bought a bought a giant Vader Pez dispenser for three seventy five. Tech Talk, that's insane. Really? That's great. That's a perfect price. Which one? There's, I've seen the giant chrome. And I've seen the giant black one. Which one did you get? Hope this one stays together better. Well, we'll see. We shall see. Fix him, dude. We shall see. I gotta be careful with this one, because you don't want to remove... The wrong parts. Needs a new battery. Oh, fair enough. All black? Fair enough. It's a good one. I've got one as well. I've got two chromes. I found one thrifting. And the other one I got in the box. I can't, I have a, a definitive Star Wars Pez collection, the Spencer collection, I should say, and I can't find it. I don't know where the hell it went. I, I, I'm not, I'm missing toy box figures that Diana probably moved somewhere, and who knows, and then the Pez stuff. I can't find either one. Which is a little frustrating, because I'm like, I know they're here. It didn't just disappear. The filament. I assume this is PLA. Fix him, dude. I didn't bother to ask, but I assume it's PLA. Because I'm putting it in my PLA upcycling bag. And being a little more tame, not asking for things like Vader time. Yeah. 
We probably should, Liz. When I get into the advice, it's probably probably best not to do Vader times and cheers and everything because some of the, the, the topics are a bit more serious. This is the model where I learned not to put tabs on connecting surfaces. Had to do a lot of sanding on Jules' giant TIE fighter. Oh yeah, I bet. Okay, so here we go. Uh, one. Here. Ooh, this is not wanting to go in. There we go. Maybe. I don't want to bend it. I'm trying to angle it in. Okay, let's try the other one. Maybe a little. a little tight. How am I upcycling? I'm I'm basically doing uh, Star Wars so, uh, uh, molds, so basically melting them into the Star Wars heads, the various colors that that I've used. Use the force. Sometimes it helps to wiggle. Yeah, I'm afraid to. I don't want to bend it. That's my big concern. It's like it's it's like this this the oh yeah I'm bending them. It's the pr the prongs themselves are. I've tried to angle it in. The prongs themselves are um, too thick. Yeah, celestial. You know, I bought a. It's like it's a silicon it's, or not a silicon. It's it's like a metal tray, meant for like cakes, like small cakes with like seven Star Wars faces or heads. And so. Uh, that's what I that's what I do and then melt I melt it in the oven I've got a I've got a huge bag of filament that needs to be processed as soon as Diana gets back uh, I learned something when I did when I did this one uh, or the series this series I mean this is this is the these are the first filaments that I ever used printing right so it's a variety of col these colors um, but I, I figured okay so next time for the first layer when I put stuff in, I want to put like the dust particles, the smaller particles in first, rather than a solid color first, just to give it more color here. Uh, the backs always turn out to be beautiful, the way the the, uh, the filaments kind of swirl around, so it's kind of beautiful front and back. It's not very thick, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a camo vader, you can't see anything. He's blending with his... Uh surrounding so anyway so i'm gonna be doing that okay fix him dude i'm a little concerned because this does not this does not necessarily want to go in by the way you're genuinely amazed that's no, it's really not that hard just just get a, a metal tin put it in the oven for the temperature melt it down let it melt and uh be safe be careful only use pla and then you're good so that's what I'm going to be doing with the excess filament. That's what I do with the excess filament. Might as well, like, up, uh, basically upcycle into Star Wars heads. In fact, I thought about, you know, if I get too, so many of them, I may end up turning around and selling selling some of them. I guess you send me another one. It'll be just right. Oh. Picks on Discord. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate it. Shout out, by the way, to Seniup if it didn't happen. Yeah, I... Fix him, dude. I, I'm not sure this is going to go in. <laughs> it's like this This one is too thick. This piece is too thick. Or these holes are too small. You, I mean, it's, it's a fine line. Too light, too loose, and too tight. Yeah. It, there, there's a fine line between too loose and too tight, you know? And I'm not sure there's, there's a perfect tolerance... I'm gonna keep keep at it. Oh, yeah, it's not happening, dude. It's it's bending. Yeah, I'm not sure I can get them in, dude. Dang it. Let's see. Let me try looking at it at the side. Yeah, it's like they're just slightly too thick. Yep. It's like there's one additional layer line. Man. 
Oh man. Well, I tell you what. This turned out perfect. Like this, this is this is this is this is the fixum dude that I did in the Galaxy Prusa Galaxy Black. They had to, it had to get glued too, but it's okay. I don't I don't mind gluing this kind of stuff. Thank you, Senia. Plus, you can do this, right? So this is like this is like a tie interceptor. Like, not quite. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I'm afraid I'm gonna snap it. <sighs> Let me try the other side. It's not going in. That's the last one you did. You've gotten a little better. Well, we all improve. I, I still suck. Oh, Kenner Star Wars emotes. Nice, Cini up. Very nice. Yeah, this is not happening, dude. <laughs> this isn't happening. Ah. Oh. You made them all by yourself? <laughs> it's there it's impossible. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, wait, 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 wait. See? That's the thing. Don't give up. Okay. Okay. See, I'm not the I, I'm not the kind of guy who gives up or or or, or, or quickly. So I got that side, so let's see what I can do with this side here. Very nice, great success. My wife. I'm afraid this one's gonna snap though, because I've already been working it. Like that other one could just get. Oh no, I'm, now I'm bending the whole damn thing. This side. This side does not love me. Do, do, do you love me? Do, do you love me, baby? Do, do, do you love me? Do, do you love me, baby? Ah, oh, yeah, it, it crunched. Uh, yeah, I can't. I, this side I was able to get in, but this side is is bending the prongs, and I'm trying to angle it in every possible way. And It's not, I don't think it's going to happen. <sighs> but you never know. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I do not give up easily. Oops. Earthquake! Earthquake! Ah! All right. Now, next, I have a feeling we're running the same problem here. <laughs> okay. First problem solved. Well, let me tell you, it's nice and tight. 
There we go. That one went on. It's a little loose. So it's either too tight or too loose. This one may need to be glued back. That's definitely going to need to get glued on. So there's two glue points. And then I have a feeling these are going to need to get glued too. Do, do you glue me? Do, do you glue me? Have you ever? Oh, see that? Those are nice. That fit. I don't know if I'll have to glue that one. This I'll have to glue. I knew. Um, but the, the wings have a nice uh, fit tolerance for sure. That wing went in really well, and it's tight, so it holds. It's a fine line. There we go. Yeah, those are nice. Have you thought about doing like a flexi Vader of sorts? Show me what you got. I got Star Wars concept art playing cards, Larzeus. From Entertainment Earth. It's a beautiful thing. And right now I'm building the uh, tiny uh, interceptor, which I didn't know how to read as a kid. I called it the tie interceptor. I, I couldn't read it. Interceptor made so much more sense. I was like, oh, Interceptor. Okay, this one's loose. The other ones fit in. Oh, no, I guess not. So the wings, the wings were very nice. Um, the wings are very nice. The wings will work. The This this part will definitely need to be glued so it stays in, in place, the, the cockpit, basically. And the only other thing, is this going to balance back? No, it points down. That's the problem with top-heavy models. Um, but yeah, that's the, there's we've done it. It worked. It worked well enough. You sent the gem dolls to your friend Julie. She's jealous, dude. You can grab them. I've got. I'm gonna want to replace my gem. You thought the comic strip Luann was pronounced Lawn. It's so funny how we misinterpret things. Then we get older and like, what the hell was I thinking? Okay, so I have a fix him dude tie-in interceptor model. There we go. Thank you, fix him dude, for the gift. Turned out great. Uh, Titan spots, loose and others, but nothing that a little bit of super glue cannot address. The wings fit perfectly. Very nice. Very kind of you, fix him dude. No need to replace. I got it to work. It was a challenge, but it worked. Yay. We're going to go ahead and put that over here. Now I have an XKCD Vader gold. XKCD Vader. This is the first thing I'm printing. Second thing I'm printing will come soon. I'm going to begin it. And then we'll roll into the advice for the night. What company makes the gem? Oh, no, no, that's a, it's Super 7. Super 7 figures. I got them on Amazon. This comes with a stand here. Hopefully I don't have problems with this getting it in the stand. Boy, I'm, I'm just notching all sorts of stuff tonight, aren't I? Come on. Second, I'm trying to get it in there. Let's go ahead and flip back. Well, I guess I don't need to. This is an XKCD uh, Vader. If you're familiar with the XKCD comic, uh, apparently at one point he had a Darth Vader. Um, someone I, I found a whole XKCD archive, so I was like, oh yeah, I need an XKCD Vader. So now I have an XKCD Gold Vader. Go Vader. Yeah, uh, Hollywood N3D's uh, uh, Vader print is spectacular. Like that, that red is absolutely solid.
So now, I'm going to get the uh, next print going here. And the next print is already loaded onto the card. A Jedi hairpin. Gonna see how well it prints. Uh, we're gonna do it in gold, if only for a gift for Jedi. See how it turns out. May use it as a hairpin, may not. Thank you, by the way, for following Blockbuster62. Uh, let's play with my toys. I play with my, my toys every day. My pajamas are very comfortable, Lars Zeus. Incredibly comfortable. I love my pajamas. Love them. Super soft. Oh, so soft. So incredibly soft. Soft, 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 soft. Mmm, soft. So, I play with my toys every day. Including this one that I don't think I showed, but it's not a big deal. It's like a, 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 an R2-D2 um, Galactic Heroes that came in the uh, thrifting bag. That ended up being kind of half a bust. But I only wanted the, the Java in it, so it, it was, wasn't was that much of a bust. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Are they supple? Well, they should be. Uh, and that's true, Krusty 3D. Twitter pro tip. Never start a tweet with an at. It makes only show up in the timeline to the person that, that you are atting. It, so it shows up like a reply to the first at sign that you use. That's true. That is very true. FYI. Wow, Hollywood N3D landing. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead, reset the drop, cue the drop. I'm going to start laying down some advice if you don't mind. Go ahead and hold on to the capogens and the drops and the, the redemptions, etc., etc. Um, thank you for that. If you do, I thought I cued the drop. Oh, did I spell it wrong? There we go. Okay, now the drops are cued. Ha! Sorry, sorry I stopped you mid-drop. But that is the case. Uh, tonight's advice is going to be something around never stop learning new things. Something like that. Never stop learning. This, this is what we're going to do. If you don't mind. Education, as I've said many times, does not begin and end in the traditional classroom. As I alluded to in my most recent advice video, uh, the one that was uh, talking about how you are free to change your mind, I believe I suggested that I've learned more outside a traditional classroom than I ever did inside a classroom. And that got me thinking about the path that I've taken in life as well, well, hello. Nice that you could join us, evil cat. I'm laying down some advice here, live on Twitch, as I do every night. Can I continue? Okay, good to know. Cats sometimes come in here and love interrupting the, the, the knowledge that I'm laying down. So in that video from yesterday, uh, I I'd mentioned that you are always free to change your mind, and you should always reserve that freedom. That does not mean that by changing your mind, you're not going to face consequences. Because very often, when you change your mind, for whatever reason, you're impacting the people around you. That's that's something that, that you should also consider. It's not always just about you. Sometimes it's about other people too. You gotta change your mind, you gotta follow your heart, you gotta go with what you believe in, and you've gotta be transparent about that, and you can't lie to other people about someone you're not. You gotta be truthful, especially when you change your mind. And consequences are going to come down. But you always have to keep learning. You have to keep learning. You can't stop. I know we all find ourselves in comfortable places. Where we've done things a certain way for, 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 for eons, it feels like. We've always done it this way, therefore we always got to do it this way. And this is the way I learned how to do it. This is it. This is how I learned how to do it, and this is the only way to do it. Well, the problem... With that kind of mindset is one, when you're when you're thinking that way, you're never going to change your mind, which could stymie personal growth and potentially making your life better. If you continue to think the way that you've always thought, and you don't open yourself up to new opportunities of, of different ways of doing things, then you're kind of doomed. 
because you're locked in. And, and, and I'm not saying this applies to every aspect of your life, because certainly there, there are things that you, you want to do the same way over and over and over again. But there are many things that you may not want to do, or we as a, a global society may not want to do as time marches on. And the only way to discover a new way of doing something is to expose yourself, to open yourself up to change, and to learn something new, to be willing to learn something new. And, and I'm telling you, it is difficult to do. I'm sure many of you have faced this problem, especially if you're used to being in your groove, right? That's what you're accustomed to. You don't necessarily want to change. You don't want to think differently because what you're doing now is working. But is it? Are, are you running into a, a certain virtual wall that you can't seem to get around? You can't seem to surmount? It could be because the way that you're thinking needs to be adjusted. And the, the way to adjust the way you're thinking is to potentially learn a different method. Learn something new. In fact, you may not actually try to solve that problem by addressing the problem head on, but by trying something else, a completely different discipline. It's like uh, 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 the Medici method, right? So if you have uh, you know, a certain way of doing things, and that's the way you've always done things, and it's working for you, hey, well, who am I to argue? But what if... Bear with me. What if that could be done better? What if you could be 25% more efficient? Would you be interested in, in figuring out how to be 25% more efficient? Why would you not? Well, it's because of the way it was always done. Who cares how it was always done? Could it be done better? And that's the question you got to start asking yourself. Could it be done better? And if the answer is possibly, what's it going to hurt you to, to try? If something that you're doing could be done better, why not? This is something that keeps me rolling forward. I, I'm always screwing up. I'm always making mistakes. I, I, I can tell you right now, I could do so many things better than I normally do. But I'm also not sitting there saying, I, I really need to double down on making this better because I, I'm not interested in making something better. Does that mean I want to stop learning about potentially making something better? No. It just means it's not necessarily a priority to make certain things in my life better. For example, YouTube thumbnails. Could they be better? Oh, absolutely. Am I going to double down on it? Not necessarily, because quite honestly, I have a hell of a lot more fun on Twitch. It, it's more my groove. I'm more of a, a live streamer, a variety streamer, than I am a, a, a quote-unquote YouTuber, and I hate that label. But I'm still listening, and I'm still watching, and I'm still learning. It's, I'm not, I, I'm, it's that I'm not at the stage where I feel I want to make changes, even after learning something, not necessarily needing to make changes because I'm not sure I'm going to see the return or it's not something that I'm necessarily invested in. But if it is something I'm invested in and I'm, I know that it could be better, then yeah, I'm going to want to learn. You're going to want to learn. You need to learn constantly, despite it being not fun sometimes, especially when what you might be learning flies in the face of everything that you've ever known. But still, there's something out there that could make your life better. I'm going to put a finer point on that. A few years ago, I realized that what I was doing wasn't working for me anymore. It, it, it wasn't personally fulfilling. I, I wasn't happy with what was happening. And I knew I needed to make a change, and I didn't know what that change was going to be and that was kind of scary but i, I kind of put put it out to the universe right uh, you know did did a lot of reaching out connecting and not with the universe with people right and it's not this isn't the secret that's a little nebulous and kind of mm, a, well not going to get into that today i just i don't put much faith in that concept but i i i, I got out there put myself out there and ultimately found an opportunity that would give me experience I didn't necessarily have. An opportunity that I didn't know anything about apart from believing that, yes, this is something I'm capable of doing. I believe this taps into my 
uh, my, my experience. And that was specifically a role at Intel, helping with their community efforts, specifically Intel graphics. And certainly I've had plenty of opportunities to, 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 to modify our approach to how we address community. And I'm grateful for that opportunity. That has given me a chance to learn more about myself, learn about how that's typically managed, certainly inside a large organization like Intel. And that's scary, but it was also exciting. So now I know more. I learned more. I developed. I also learned that I'm not so sure that that particular discipline, specifically in the, that construct, is, is what is going to provide a, a great degree of personal fulfillment. I love talking. I love sharing. I mean, hell, I'm doing it right now. I'm sharing advice. I, 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 I love learning new things when I know that by learning something new, I'm going to benefit directly. I, I'm selfish, right? I'm only going to learn th uh, new things because I can benefit directly. That's what learning is all about. You're going to benefit directly. Even if your learning benefits other people, you're benefiting vicariously. It's personally satisfying. So I learned something new. And I learned something new about myself to recognize that eh, yeah, maybe I want to try something else. So I'm learning that I would possibly like to try some other type of opportunity that plays out within Intel. I'm like, all right, well, uh, what could I do? What, what, what would fit? What would be personally satisfying? What will work for me? And, and as much as I enjoy what I'm doing now, I'm also expanding my horizons, expanding my view, expanding my understanding of myself and the world vicariously, just, just wanting to learn because I know that it's, it's thrilling to me when I've mastered something new. And that, above all else, should be the reason you want to keep learning. That's the number one reason you don't want to just get locked in to the way Avaline that you... French just resubscribed for five months. Thank you, Aveline French. Appreciate your support. Always. Uh, Aveline's been with us for a while. Ever since the vlogs, I think, Aveline, you were following in the vlogs? The vlogs were new to me at one point. I was doing videos, right? And then I did the vlog stuff, and that was fun, but it ran its course. Kind of came back to my, my favorite thing to do, and that is live streaming and, and sharing my perspectives, which I'm doing both of those things right now, at least at the time of the recording. What I'm also doing at the time of this recording is 3D printing. I'm uh, I'm doing a, a hair a, a pin of sorts for Jedi or potentially Diana. It's got the Jedi symbol on top. I'm 3D printing. That's something I had no idea how to do at the beginning of this year. I was interested. Eh, it's kind of nice, but it, it seems kind of clunky at a distance. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. It, it seems to be mired in esoteric processes and it seems kind of messy and is that really something that I, I i really want to throw myself in is that something else that that i want what am i what am i gonna do right so i started to learn started to take it in i'm like all right well i guess i could you know start 3d printing star wars stuff that's kind of cool stuff that i couldn't get in a store or anywhere else i could make just like that I find a model or potentially even modify a model or make a model myself and then, it, and then print it and then it suddenly exists where it didn't before. So then I had to decide, is it worth the time, very small amount of time, that investment of time to learn something, maybe not master it, but to at least be learn enough to be dangerous. It's not, I'm not that dangerous with it. I've, I've, I've been successful for half a year, six months into 3D printing. But that was only something that I did not because, ooh, 3D printer, it's a gadget. Look at this hardware. Cool, I have hardware. It wasn't that. That wasn't the carrot. To me, it was about the things that I could do with the printer. That was enough of an opportunity to open that door to learn something new. And so I have. I've been learning as I go along. Not even close to mastering it. Not even close to understanding half of what I'm doing. But I'm doing it and I'm having fun. And now I have a new hobby in my life. Six months later, six months deeper, I have something that I'm very interested in that I wasn't interested in at all six months ago. At age 
48. So don't let them tell you that, well, you know, you're too old. You can't learn anything new. That's BS. It's not about your age. It's about your mindset. You're never too old to learn something new, to learn something different, to open yourself up to a different perspective. As uncomfortable as that perspective might make you feel, it still may be worth walking through that door because the opportunities on the other side are there waiting for you. They're waiting for you. They're not going to come through the door for you. They're not going to push you through the door. You have to walk through it yourself. You have to reach out. You have to grab that brass ring or the, uh, the, uh, the, the golden winter glitter ring of sorts, as it were, with this filament color from Printed Solid. So, as I mentioned yesterday, you have the ability, the power to change your mind, to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to learn something new. You're going to set out to learn something new. Maybe you're not going to set out to learn something new, but you're going to keep yourself open to opportunities to learn something new. You know, I, I, I always wanted to learn about that. I was always kind of curious about that. What are you waiting for? A, a personal invitation? This is as personal as it gets, I'm telling you. The day you stop learning is the day you start dying. Always be learning. Always. Challenge your convictions. If only to better understand your convictions and where you stand. Don't take it on blind faith. Like, well, I always did it this way and this is what I believe and that's the way it's always going to be. Well, okay, well, is that, is that really challenging yourself? Is that challenging a conviction that you had? You're, I'll tell you this, you challenge your convictions, you may still believe what you used to believe, but those beliefs will be even stronger because you challenged them. And the best way to challenge your convictions is to learn something new, to expose yourself to something that, that was completely um, unknown to you. Maybe up until a day ago, a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, a decade ago. Never stop learning. Never. Be voracious about it. Enjoy the things that you enjoy. Enjoy the, enjoy the beliefs that you have, but don't rest on them because you'll be cutting yourself off from so much more by being frozen in time. Unfreeze yourself ever so briefly, if only to learn something new, to, to, to move forward with with a new opportunity, with with something that you never thought was going to be possible, but suddenly it is. That's when growth happens. That's when you start to, to see things differently and potentially start solving problems that, that were plaguing you for years, you know? That's what, coming back to what I was mentioning earlier, you know, to, to, to fix a problem, sometimes you got to think beyond it. Sometimes you can't be thinking about that problem directly. It's why, you know, sometimes you'll be in the shower and like, oh my God, I know how to fix the problem because you're not thinking about it. Well, by learning something new, you may learn new ways to address problems or shortcomings that you didn't recognize before. In the subject of 3D printing, just one example, I might be able to 3D print a part that, that had previously broken on another unit that wasn't going to be uh, replaceable and I could suddenly replace it. It's a new opportunity to solve a problem. One example. But man, don't don't ever stop learning. Whatever you want to learn, right? That doesn't mean you can be all things to all people. That doesn't mean you can be all things to yourself. It doesn't mean you can you solve every problem. You got to pick your battles. But the last thing you want to do is just sit on what you have and and stay comfortable in the zone where you're in. It's not fun sometimes to push yourself, but what are you waiting for? You're the only one responsible for pushing yourself. No, nobody, don't, don't, don't foist that responsibility onto somebody else. Don't, don't expect someone else is going to get you to, to, to do something like that. It's not my responsibility. It's not their responsibility. It's your responsibility to do it. So I'm just, I'm just recommending learn something new. Take it in. Maybe it's just a, a documentary that you watch or, or a series of documentaries and it changes your perspective. And then you do a little bit more research and then you do, oh, well, this is the way this was reported, but this is the way this was reported. And then you, you've learned something new. You've increased your knowledge and potentially opened up a completely new door to yourself that you didn't realize was open all along. Always be learning. Didn't start and stop in school. It, 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 the, the, the day that, that, that learning stops is the day that you're no longer with us. 
So you've got nothing but time on your hands. How are you going to spend it? Learn it. Take it in. Soak it up. It's the reason why, you know, in the evenings now, doing these Twitch streams, it's like it pushes me to do something rather than just veg out. I veg out. Don't get me wrong. Last night, tried to watch 2001 for the first time, and oh my god. I'm sorry, not to offend any 2000, 2001 fans, but wow, I got halfway through... I'm never gonna finish watching that movie. It, 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 I, no, it's I'm. It did not. No, I, I did not. I do not want to learn anything more about 2001. I'm, I've learned enough. I'm good. Plenty other things to, to learn about. Uh, so thank you, uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. Thank you for watching on Twitch Live. If you were watching on Twitch Live. Uh, if there's any other advice that, that I might be able to share with you, I've got, I've got a few things on the back burner that I'd like to talk about uh, at, at some point in the future, but I thought it would be a good to, topic to tackle today. Lifelong learning, uh, especially in, in light of yesterday's uh, uh, advice clip talking about um, how you always should reserve the right to change your mind. Eh, stay malleable, like a, a warm filament. Malleable. It's a good. Th I'm not me. I'm not malleable. Please. I'm checking. No, not really. I mean, I got I got bones. What 2001 we're we talking about? We're talking about the movie. I didn't. I did. I just did not like the movie at all. Ooh, not for me. Not for me. At all. I tried. I tried. Hey, TC Jamie. Good to see you. And everybody else. And thank you, by the way, for following Pop Pop Wow. I caught that. Sad? I agree. The movie was sad. I, oh, my God. I'm just like... I, I immediately, I'm like, the only thing I could think of was that Judge Judy gif where she was going, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Like, oh my god. Get on with it. Halfway through and I'm like, I, I'm done. I can't. More power to you. If you like the movie, great. Uh, I, I put that firmly within the camp of The Expanse. 2001 is The Expanse of movies. Oh... <laughs> uh, uh. Or The Expanse is the 2001 of, of, of sci-fi TV shows. Some movies require drugs? Yeah, uh, I, I I tend to agree. Uh, I'm with you on that one, Liz. That, that would, I think it would have been greatly uh, um, enhanced with, uh, with something else. Yes, 2001 is for people with higher QI. Well, I'm not sure what QI is, but I'm pretty sure anyone with a higher IQ would know that it's IQ. Oh, got you there. Huh? You see what I did? See, I know what you did. Did you see what I did? Huh? Did you catch it? Yeah? Huh? You have a question? What's the best way to get your mood to change once it goes off? Oh, Aveline French. That is an amazing question. I love that question. It is a very difficult question for me to answer, but I will do my best to answer that question. <sighs> Aveline, why do you have to stump me with this? Uh... It's a good question. The best way to get your mood to change once it goes off. You know, I'm, I'm going to say a couple of things because it's me. And I'm prone to say a couple of things. I am Italian. That's not an excuse. It's just the truth. I had a very Italian family upbringing. Very passionate. Very engaged. Very... Uh, religious, very uh, um, disciplined, uh, very loud, very, did I already say loud? Very yelly, very hand gestury, very facial expression-y, uh, emotive, Is, can I use that word? So, I've never had a problem sharing my feelings. I don't care what everybody else thinks. I'm going to share my, my feelings. What I'm thinking, this is what I think. Blah. And I guess that's an Italian thing to do. Now, whether that's nature versus nurture, I don't know if I can peel back those layers. I believe 
it's nature more than nurture, but I can't rule out nature. Uh, or, I'm sorry, I can't rule out nurture. I can't rule out my upbringing. I happen to believe that it's more nurture. Uh, or, sorry, nature. God bless America. That's, that's where I grew up, in America. But I have a full Italian heritage. I recently started and finished The Sopranos, right? And there were a, there were a lot of moments. Not every, my, I'm not in the mafia. No, no one in my family, to my knowledge, is into the mafia or anything like that. But the, the familial uh, and, and, and friend um, relationships that, that I saw play out were eerily familiar. Eerily. Like, wow. Like, spooky. Like, whoa. I mean, just the, the language and, and, and the setup and, and, and the, uh, the, the dynamics were incredibly familiar to me. The expressions, incredibly familiar to me. Not as exaggerated as that form of entertainment was, but I will tell you, uh, even though I didn't even come close to growing up like anybody in The Sopranos, uh, that, that Italian-ness was incredibly familiar to me. And trust me, Aveline, I, I am getting to your answer, but I need to set the stage. Because I'm someone who tends to lean in and tends to share and tends to just put it out there. And then once it's out there, I move on. I got it off my chest. You know, I thought, you know, I, I, at some point that, that, that this was dysfunctional, right? Because the fighting and the yelling and the, the engaging, right? Well, no, it sounds dysfunctional. And in fact, it's more dysfunctional to not. It's more dysfunctional to bottle it up. It's more dysfunctional to not talk about it. It's more dysfunctional to, to hide and, and, and lie about that which you're feeling, which is completely, completely unintuitive to me. I, I'm not into it. It's never going to happen. I, I can't. Could I, could I learn to hide my feelings? Oh, trust me, I've gotten better with it because I wear my heart on my sleeve and I put it out there and it's off my chest. I'm good. I've moved on. But in doing that, the problem is that my mind sometimes has a difficult time stopping. My mouth has a difficult time stopping too, but that's why I love doing video. Hello. But my mind keeps going. And it's hard to silence the mind, especially when I'm on a thought. And, I, and if I'm on a certain thought, I don't necessarily like to change topics. I may talk around the topic, but this is the topic. I got to focus. This is the thing I need to share. This is the thing I need to talk about. This is how I want to talk about it. This is how I want to present my thoughts, my feelings. And when I do that, you can you can even sense I'm sighing, right? I'm like, I'm getting, not agitated, but I'm getting worked up. And that's my mood. My mood goes from, okay, I'm good. And then suddenly an outside object hits me and I'm like, okay, I'm going off. This is the direction I'm going now. I've been knocked by an outside object and this is the thing I need to share right now. Let me share it. Let me say everything I need to say. Because I've been put in this position where I need to get this off my chest. So I was fine over here and then suddenly my mood changed because I was sent on a different trajectory. But I need to get it out. I need to get it off my chest. I need to express myself. So that's one way of changing your mood. Express yourself. Don't lock it up. Don't swallow it. Just, just, just express yourself. Now, in terms of expressing yourself, you may have to attenuate your passion, as I've learned, which isn't always easy to do, especially when you're really passionate about a subject, passionate about a topic and you, 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 you need to share, and things get loud and heated. You still need to express yourself. You still need to let it be known. You still need to get it off your chest because if you don't, your mood won't change. Because you've just swallowed it. You're back building resentment. And you're keeping it inside your head where it doesn't need to be, especially if it's a situation where you need to express yourself. So don't lock it up. Again, I'm not saying explode. You may very well need to, uh, 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 as, I, as I believe I just said, kind of uh, put a damper on your passion a bit or communicate a little more clearly so that you've expressed yourself successfully. That's one way of changing your mood. Get it out. So if it's to somebody else, it's getting it out. 
Maybe it's not to somebody else. Maybe you need to get out another way. Fine. Write. You can't write? Who cares? No one's going to read it. Write. You can't spell? Who cares? No one's going to read it. Write. Maybe not physically. Maybe you got a keyboard. Doesn't matter. Write. Document. Journal. Get it out. And then once it's done, tear it up. Delete it. Because now you've expressed yourself. Maybe not to someone else directly, but you've got it out. That catharsis is critical to changing your mood. Because if you do not process it, it'll never get processed. It's just going to be lingering there like a cloud. And you'll just punt it. I don't need to process it. No worries. It's not like it's going to come out sideways. It will. By the way, spoiler alert, it'll come out sideways. Because you didn't address it. And because you failed to address your mood, something else may set you off. Something else may change your trajectory. And then you're just going to, then you're really going to explode. And then someone's not going to understand. Well, who peed in your Cheerios, dude? Dude, why are you? Why are you blaming me for something that I had? What the hell are you doing, dude? You didn't process it. That, that was your failure to not. I, I, I'm telling you. If you fail to process something, that's your fault. You are to blame. There's nobody else responsible for your mood. Process it. It's the bottom line. Process it with somebody else. Process it in the moment. Process it by writing it down away from anybody else. Or another way to process it? Take time out. I know this sounds unintuitive, especially people that are just like, Duh. walk away. Especially in moment number one, right? Where just, things are getting heated and you need to share it. You can share it later. You don't have to get into the last word. Walk away. And if the other person does not respect you, when you walk away, they don't understand how to resolve a situation that seems to be kind of heated. Right? Where a mood is, 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 is elevated and, and, and you need to resolve that. So, so you've got... There are many, I'm talking through like many circumstances here, right? You've got the, the, the where your mood changes because someone does something that you don't like. Your mood changes because something happens and you, you, you need to process it. And if you don't process it, then the chances are you're going to over-process when someone else comes along. Or another moment where you know you don't have enough, um, enough, uh, you have plenty of energy, but you don't have enough um, breathing room to provide enough context for what it is that you're thinking and feeling and that's the moment you need to walk away and when you walk away you have a chance to reflect you have a chance to reflect on your mood and you need to it comes back to it's come back to it comes back i said it right that time it comes back to processing you have to process it and so many times people don't process they just swallow their their emotions they swallow their feelings they, we all self-soothe, you know, uh, we all have things that we turn to for comfort. Fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't go out and buy new Star Wars figures. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that you shouldn't enjoy uh, a, 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 a vegan ice cream cone. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying that's not a replacement for processing. That's not a, re a replacement for thinking and understanding your role in your mood and understanding why you're in that mood. No one else is going to do it for you. Don't voice that responsibility onto anybody else. Nobody can change your mood but you. Nobody. Just like nobody out there can make you happy. You're either happy or you're not. So, how to change your mood, especially when it's a mood that you don't want to be in, change your environment. Get it off your chest. Process it. Step away. These are all, uh, I would say, working hypotheses. I'm only an expert in being myself. I, I, I'm not an expert in anything else. I'm just telling you, based upon experience, the, the, this is the way to do it. You need to change your mood. Change. Change something. Change how you're thinking. Change how you're processing. Change where you are. But it's still your responsibility. And it's not always easy because there's certain things that doesn't matter how many times we think about it, we still feel a certain way. 
at that point, I would say push yourself to a point of catharsis. Talk to somebody else, maybe an involved party, uninvolved party, doesn't matter. Hey, no shame in therapy at all. Anybody who would shame you for any kind of therapy, there's something wrong with them, not with you. Because it's okay to ask for help. And if you don't want to talk to someone else, like I said, go back to writing. Right, 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 right. Because trust me, you just, you pour your heart out. Doesn't matter. Gramma grammar, spelling, who cares? No one's going to see it. It's not going to be printed anywhere. Don't go to Twitter. Don't go to social media. Don't go to YouTube. Don't go to Twitch. Don't, don't share those thoughts immediately, especially if you're in this heightened sense of like, I'm in a bad mood. I am in a sad mood, right? You know, you need to, you need to take that time for yourself to process that stuff. Writing, this is, that's my version of writing, right? You know, uh, although I don't handwrite anything anymore, right? So I'll type, writing, typing, trust me, you're going to get five pages in. You're, you're going to get to the point where you don't know what else to type. You're going to start to feel better. Mark my words. Mark my words. And if you don't feel better, keep writing. Because there's something that you need to process. But the last thing you want to do, if you're trying to change your mood, is just swallow it and punt it or blame somebody else. Now, you, you can hold them responsible for something that they might have done to impact your mood, but it's, it's still something that you have to deal with. You have to deal with your mood. Who else is in your head? If, if you can't even describe it yourself, how do you expect anybody else to? And it may take time. It may not be immediate. But don't ignore it. Don't sit silent. Put it out there in one way, shape, or form to somebody else or to yourself. Not always easy. Not always fun. But you can do it. You can. Just like I can 3D print things that I didn't realize I'd ever be able to do. This turned out really nice. This 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 dovetails into the the, the recent advice that I gave on uh, uh, never stop learning. Uh, I got a Jedi. This, is, this turned out pretty cool. I made pretty few of these in different colors for Jedi. I have to clean it up a tiny bit, but this works. This works really well. Uh, I need to clean up some of the brim a bit. So Aveline, uh, never stop dropping. Did that, did that, did that even come close to answer the question? Okay. This is great advice. Needed to hear it. Aveline, you know, I, I don't pretend to know everything. This is not my ego talking. I'm telling you, I'm only an expert in being myself. I will say that again and again and again and again. I am not credentialed in any way. I'm not a freaking life coach. Definitely not a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever. I have a freeze. Okay. Give me a second on the freeze. Victor freeze. I want to try to get the uh, the brim off here. I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Well, it's not much of a brim. Or supports. I had supports laid down. Mm. Boy, this may be it. Sorry, everybody. Give me a moment. And then I will do the uh, freeze. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. Yeah, I got it. Kind of. Ah. As much as I would love to have used a raft or possibly a brim on there, I don't know. Kind of a cool. I'll hold it up here in a second, so y'all can see it. Just taking the uh, support stuff off. Not there's not much to it. The supports. Probably should file it, but it is what it is. Okay, getting the freeze frame. All right, did Liz, sorry, Liz, did you get a, I'm not sure, I'll get the freeze frame prepared, not, it's not exactly a pin, oops, sorry, it's not exactly a pin, it's a hair pin thing, hair pin.
Thank you, Avalion. Appreciate you unfreezing me. Thank you, everybody else, for the patience you gave during that. Everything. Uh, and yeah, I know. I, I think it's a pretty cool... I like anything with the Jedi symbol on it that I can find. Um, crusty. It would make a pretty decent bookmark. Um, but I'm not sure how well it'll work, because he doesn't really have hair that goes like that, but the idea would be that, you know, the... I would do it potentially in a different color, too, but even if it's not used as a hairpin, it's kind of a neat little... Sty not really a stylus, but, like, yeah, thing. It's got the Jedi symbol on it. I ran into it today. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm a little concerned that the uh, the points here are a little thin. Thinner than I'd like them to be here at the base of the Jedi symbol. Uh, but still, it's pretty cool. It's a very nice... Uh, I, was, I found, like, a couple of things. I'm like, these are kind of small prints, but worth doing. Now I should probably do... Probably do those kyber crystals. Start those, huh? I haven't done the kyber crystals in. Theoretically, these will print okay because I'm not sure what temperature they're going, but. Um, I've got the, the, this gold kyber crystal, the old gold kyber crystal, a little darker versus the yellow one. B1G underscore Yano just resubscribed for five months. Big Thank you for the raid yesterday. B1 G on Benchy Hype, B1 G on Benchy Hype, B1 G on Benchy Hype. <laughs> Benchy. Nice. Uh, no problem for the raid. I'm very, I'm glad that you were, um, you were streaming. I always get excited when, uh, uh, someone who is, uh, someone that I want to raid is streaming. Wow, oh, we, we need to raid them. We haven't raided them yet. And then I have a chance. I love that. It's like my favorite thing ever. I know I'm weird that way, but it's like, oh, we get to raid him. All right. That's so cool. Yeah. Woo. It's like, we got to do it right now. Another freeze? Are you kidding? And yes, happy birthday. There's Devious Lie Manga. Coda 120 chaired X100. Thank you, Coda 120, for unfreezing me. Really appreciate it. Even though it's Devious Lie Mango's birthday, it is. Happy birthday, Devious Lie Mango. Shout out to Devious Lie Mango. Uh, my booty is now fully percolated. FYI. Devious Lie Mango fully percolated my booty. This is something you would understand if, if you heard him basically DJing that phrase for like six hours straight today. If you need to get your booty <laughs> percolated, you need to go over to Devious Lie Mango stream. Something I learned today. Yeah. You're glad I'm percolated? That's cool. See, I got the, I got the Jedi symbol up there. Does that look good? Yeah? It's kind of like a little pin. Things are blurry. They are? What? It is hump day. This week is just flying by, ain't it? You thought it was a she staff? Oh, it could have been. This, I guess this could have been a staff. It's a hair, pit, a hair pin, hair pick thing that I ran across. I'm like, all right. It's pretty cool. It, it probably could have been done a little better. Um, we'll see if Jedi likes it. Maybe Diana will like it. If not, then it just becomes this little... The thing with the Jedi symbol on it, so it can't be that bad. Can't be that bad. Can't be that horrible. It 
it's fun in a bun. It is. The problem is, um, there there's some rough spots here from where it was on the bed. Originally, it, 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 it they had it printing like this, and I thought, eh, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to jinx it. They had it printed vertically, which I could have done, but I thought it'd be a little easier just to lay it flat. Um, I mean, if, if Diana likes it, then I can always reprint it another way. But you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about it too much if they're not gonna if they don't care about it that much. You know, it's kind of like the law of diminishing returns. Like, what's the point of doing a super high quality thing if you know they don't care? But like I said, I'm a sucker for the the Jedi stuff, and I was like, oh, that that'd be a kind of cool thing to have in gold. All right, the Vader, gold Vader goes back there. And then we got the gold Kyber crystals. Uh, what inspired her to do a, a percolating song? I don't know. That's you. You're doing the percolating song. 63. He's 63 now. Wow. Golden Winter Glitter of PLA for one of your favorite. That I said the same thing. I tweeted it the other day. This is easily, I think, my favorite Jesse PLA so far. I haven't used all of them. Haven't come close. But I, I, I mean, I like the gold stuff. I like the neutral kind of stuff. Um, I like this a lot. That, that yellow gold kind of uh, uh, color to it. Almost a mustardy gold. If I can use that as a, as a, as a term. So now I'm thinking, through, ooh, what else could I print in gold? It is Mrs. Barnacles' birthday. I watched her on Jerry's stream earlier. She joined. I'm like, cool! Mrs. Barnacles is on! She was the co-host for a while. For a long while, really. So many July babies. There are. There are a lot of us out here. Uh, how did the glowing one come out on your birthday? Uh, very well. They all came out well. Uh, this it's it's not really glowing. It's it's a UV reactive. Um, I mean it, it it looks like it could glow in the dark. I need to, to find a few other models that I that I want to use with it uh, as well. Uh, I'm not sure which ones I want to go with. I know um, ultimately I want to um, I, I may grab another filament color to uh, do a uh, uh, some clips. For uh, the uh, um, for the spools, when I store them, I need some clips for the filament, uh, and I need to print out some new ones. I can't find the the, the one that I used before, but I'm, I'm going to try a different one this time. Not sure which color I want to use on them yet, and I have I have half a mind to use the the uh, the the the, uh, the reactive filament just because it really stands out. It jumps out. It, it doesn't blend in. Really jumps out, big time. Big time. Mustard yellow. That's what I'm saying. It's a very mustard yellow gold. With the glitter. It's it's a good one. It's a, it's a very nice. Uh, it's a wonderful. Wow. We, 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 we plowed through two bits of advice tonight. I wasn't expecting the second one, but Avaline surprised me. I could have saved it, but I felt like going in the moment. Can't hurt. So, who are we going to raid tonight? There are a few people out there from the teams, like, uh, Home, what is it, Home Escape? What is that? Home Scope? I don't know why I'm following him. Home Scope? Uh, Yoko is streaming. AZ Pinoy, we've raided recently, not as recent as, uh, or, or recently enough. Yoko, we haven't raided in a while. She's doing the, the co hosting with uh, GL Faraday. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just waiting. So, they're doing the Tokyo Treat stuff. M is on. We just, but we just raided Zach tonight. 
Who to raid? Crimson Faith. Now we need to... to, to took? Who's Took? Took? Yoko. Yeah, Yoko. Yoko's chatting with a guest, which is... Uh, th those are always fun streams. Uh, who to rate? Well, that, that's the question, but I need... I need In order to do a poll, I need, like, the options. I'm inclined to say Yoko, because we did Zack the other day when he returned... So, you know, which is awesome. So I like spreading the love. I like sharing the love, right, throughout. And it's been a while since I think we've rated Yoko, and the fact that she's doing it with somebody else tonight is is pretty awesome. So how about we do that? How about we raid Yoko? That's my inclination tonight. How do I, can I... Autocorrect is going to start WW3. I hear you, Krusty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jawa, for cheering me on. Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. Thank you for listening to my advice. Uh, happy birthday to uh, Deviously Mango. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you for the brief hype train. Uh, and I appreciate at least being able to leave the station. That's always a thumbs up for me. Um, so thanks. I'm saying that for real. I love you. I appreciate you, but at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices and may the force be with you always. I'll be back again tomorrow night, 6 p.m. to suck. Uh, although I don't know what I'm printing yet, <laughs> it will be something. It may very well be those clips flipping back to that that that, that glowy darky glow in the darky green, the neon green, the UV reactive green. It doesn't really glow in the dark on its own. Uh, no problem, Avaline. Glad I could help. Very glad I could help. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna raid Yoko. Get your Perilla Raider emotes ready, as Big Jano has done. Perilla Raider, and thank you, by the way, Big Jano, for stopping in. Uh, and thank you for the <laughs> That's right. You heard the Raider, Larzus. You know, you know what the number is. We're gonna be Tuscan raiding Live and Levita Yoko. Give her a follow if you haven't. And GL Faraday as well. Two wonderful nerds. Uh, looks like they're going through a Japan box. Like a f snacks or something. So that's gonna be fun. Tuscan rating in three, two, one. <laughs> Boop. Is it food? Are they eating food? Hey, Thomas, we got a Tuscan raid just in time. We're just about to get started. Woo! We got, we just, we literally just opened our box. We have the August box from Tokyo Treat. 